Guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more AFK Journey, and today we're jumping into the Snow Stomper, our first hit of the season, really, and it is on the difficult difficulty, which most people are getting to. Now, we're going to show you quickly uh, pretty much what we've already set up. This is what the traditional lineup would normally be, uh, having Shakir, swapping the Odin, all that fun stuff. However, this strategy isn't really one that's going to work for us right now, but I wanted you guys to see the baseline here. So the one game mode Shakir really thrives in. Sending the Odeon lets him get that aura from the Shakir as well. Uh, however, there's going to be one big issue right now with our current power levels. And that's the fact that Snow Stomper is going to do a ridiculous amount of damage in his cone AoE. And chances are Odi and the rest of the heroes are not going to survive after a couple of these hits. So for right now, we're going to have to go with a more tanky setup. You can see how much damage that did right there. Two of them went down. If they're going down and we're only lasting to like the 45 second mark that means our damage is not going to be that great you see right here we get to like 30 ish two percent it's not that great we're using the old artifact setup too just so we can kind of compare and yeah we're, we're still in a decent rank but we don't want to use an old team that's not going to work right now we need the newness now i'm keeping everybody at 160 right now just to keep things level across the board uh if for some reason you have like just for example this slot right here for morale was at a higher level you probably want to do something like swapping the odian make sure that they have the highest level but let's show you guys something else we are going to test a couple of different teams here as well but what i'm going to show you next is most likely the best option here so one thing we are going to be doing here is we are going to be getting rid of the mural we're going to be swapping you over to the side we are going to be going with the quick blade spell now that's going to be one of the best options here and what we're going to be throwing in is coco and we want to put coco up the front so that we have three of them together that's going to help out the overall team because again one big part about this is getting shakir to his ex plus 10 uh, and that's going to give him each non-summon ally within the Lupine Aura can share the same attack bonus of the wolf. This is usually really good. Uh, having three targets up there together is really, really strong. So we're going to be swapping the Coco up the front, almost like we do normally with the tank. And we're going to put Odie off to the side. And we should see an improvement right away. In these early season type times when we don't have like level 240 on our heroes we don't have all the power that we should have just yet running coco is pretty much a safe bet most of the time however you can see right there our coco might have been a little bit too weak in this situation she actually did go down uh what we're going to try to do is manipulate where we're placing that coco and again sometimes she's not going to get her active off because of the silence and everything and if that happens that is going to be bad for us the positive to running this type of team though is the fact that we're going to be getting a five hero faction bonus which i'll show you guys in this next attempt so you can try a couple different things you can try putting odie in the front you can try putting coco in the front it really just depends on your power level we're only 160 whereas some other whales are probably further along uh but you have to remember we're going for this faction bonus as well we have five heroes because Ryanir counts right here now if you don't have a Ryanir probably throwing someone in like a uh whatchamacallit a smoky to get a little bit of healing off might be the better option you could always throw a Thorin in as well as another option to give additional bonus damage uh but let's give it a couple tries with the Coco swap and see if we can get it to work we just need Coco to live through basically the initial burst and then get her ultimate off and the fact that ours is mythic plus as well means it's going to be even better because we should get the shields eventually we need to break this down quickly coco does survive right there and now we need to basically live until the silence stops oh there we go oh we barely got it off hopefully ah oh, kruger still goes down so you can see as we get to like go through this season the teams are going to change so don't take this video as this is going to be the end game setup we're just trying to make the best of the situation right now with the heroes that we have we're a little bit weaker than some of the other whales out there so our team isn't going to work just as good but again this is a good example to kind of base your team off of to see if you can make it work uh, as you guys can see there that did not go super well either we might get to 40 percent i don't know <sighs> shakir's gonna die so yeah this is gonna be the end we did live longer and you see our score did get better even though things didn't work out exactly the way we wanted them to we can try a couple more times. I really want to try to get to 40% to get that chest. I just don't know if it's going to be something we can accomplish. 
I do want to try something else as well. I want to try dropping Odie out and instead running Alsa while keeping our other hero, Coco, in the back more safe. What that also means is the target of the uh, the snowbank, that little like snowball that blocks someone in, is going to be right at the front. So the heroes aren't going to have to run as far. The question is, can Alsa survive? And on top of that, also is going to benefit from the Shakir now as well, whereas the OD was not. So you can see right here, uh, also did get the snow block right there, and it is closer, so they don't have to run to the target, which means there's more uptime on the boss. And honestly, this might work out even better than the OD strategy. We're gonna the, the problem with also is a lot of her ability comes from using and spamming her active skill, her ultimate right there. Uh, but we are silenced quite often. The benefit is that almost like one tapped that snowbank, that snow boulder, which was pretty interesting. And this feels like this might actually be a really good run. Oh no, everybody's dying. No. So yeah, it looks like on my account, probably the peak for us right now is about 32%, really no matter who those other heroes are. Um, the only other thing I could think is maybe we could try dropping Coco and running Odie as well and just try to burst the team down. Because again, when we're in this really weird middle ground, you just got to find what works best for your team. And in our situation, it might look something like this. Although I can't... Mm, quick Blade spells for physical defense. We're almost running more of a magic team now. So there's a lot of things we could try here as well. One of them being... Hmm, you know what? We could try dropping a Kruger out and running Thorin as well. Let's just try a bunch of different, different strategies because you never know what's going to work on your account, which is why a lot of these videos we're putting out this week are kind of like the most optimal for what my team looks like. If you're a Paragon hero, we have a bunch of Paragon heroes on your team, you're going to look a little different. You're going to be able to have more survivability and stuff, which means you're going to be able to do more things. If you are more free to play low spender, this might not work out exactly the same, but might still have some uses for you. So let's see how this looks without the Coco. It seems like everybody's still doing decently and we are hitting that 30% mark. We do have to run back to Odie, but again, her ultimate is really nice because it bounces her right back next to the boss. And it turns out running more damage dealers and not Coco is actually the play. <laughs> we are at 37, 38%. So that's interesting. 38%. That's much better than our previous run trying to keep our heroes alive. Instead, we're going with the strategy. Let's just try to burst the boss down as fast as possible. And that put us into the top 10. I want to try one thing further. I want to try running a Thorin, and I think what we can do is something like this, where we're going to link up the Odie to give him a little bit more survivability. What this does for us is it gives us more damage bonus, because right now, with the Quick Blade spell, we're already getting that physical defense uh, destruction, essentially, what Kruger normally does. So actually running Thorin and keeping maybe the Odie alive longer is going to be the better strategy here. Because no matter what, else is the target. Shakir and Odie are like the only two that can even attack that snowbank over there. Reinier did go down early but again we're already at 25 percent, and this is looking like a big burst run potentially and our thorn's gonna have a little bit more survivability keeping our od alive a little bit longer potentially too and thorn might actually do more damage i love how alsa can run over and just do that hit with the ultimate that's really cool she did go down oh thorn is still tanking some stuff it is keeping the od alive longer which is a positive Maybe we should try to link up with our Alsa instead. Oh, we are so stinking close. The Odie's going to die, but these two are actually going to get us to 40%. Yes, we got the chest. That is absolutely huge. So Thorn on our account actually turning out to be the better option. Uh, now, Odie should be doing more damage than Alsa here. Yeah, because he's just simply living longer. I'd love to see what happens if Alsa is the one that is surviving so i want to do this and then i'll put you like up over here somewhere we can put shakir right in the front that way we're both getting some magic buffs or debuffs we're getting some uh, physical buffs all that fun stuff let's see how this works out yeah also always gets pushed over to the corner same with shakir it's kind of an annoying thing but because right here, basically, it makes it so that, like, only Shakir's the one breaking her out. But she does have more damage reduction, too. I just hate the positioning of Alsa in a lot of these situations. Odie's about to go down, too, which is not a good look. We don't really have any healing or anything. Alsa's still alive, which is good. Here did go down. 
I mean, Odie going down right there gives more uptime on the boss, so that might even be a better strategy how we're working this. Question is, can the Alsa keep going? And yeah, we're going to run into this situation right here where eventually the Alsa is probably going to go down here because, yeah, she just she she's linked up to the Thorn, which takes a huge amount of her HP, which is not great. But we did get to 40% today, which was one of the biggest things I wanted to get done. And Alsa did provide a ton of damage in this scenario, which is really, really cool. Odie still outperforming, though. So keeping the Odie alive is the more important role, which makes me think maybe we don't even run the Alsa at this point. I wonder if we link up like here. There's other heroes we could potentially use in this situation. Like we could still run the Merrily in this spot to see how it goes because we're still going to have three up front. We're not having the Kruger. I just don't know if I like putting Odie right up in front of the boss. That's the one sketchy part in this situation is Odie cannot really survive this hit. But if he's linked up maybe to the Thorin, we could make it work. So next time we'll try it with the Odie linked up and not the Kruger. It's much better when like one of the ranged targets actually feels like... I mean, Merrily took so much damage. It's rough. This is when we're going to have the biggest burst right here in this phase. Oh, Odie took a big hit, but he is staying alive up front. Now he gets blocked up, but Merrily still up to do some attacks, which means he is going to break out. And then, yeah, that cleave. O Odie on our account right now just can't survive that. Uh, in my opinion, you can go for the Coco method if that's going to help you out the most. But it seems like on my account, the burst method seems to be doing the best for us. So let's do one more attempt. Uh, it does seem like just going all out max damage is going to be the best option for us. And even in this situation, maybe even running the Kruger and swapping here could be a really good play. There's so many options that we can do. We can do run all these different support heroes, different damage dealers, buff our damage, reduce the enemy's defense. Like there's so many combinations that we can do on our account right now that figure out the exact perfect one might not be easy. But hopefully by watching this, you guys can realize swapping in different heroes will play different roles. And again, having the Odie get the block means all three of the enemies or the allies can actually run back and break that snow really quickly. This is interesting. Definitely, definitely interesting. Yeah, because I like this. All of them just turn around. They break the snow really quickly. They get back to it. Granted, granted, Odie is taking a lot of damage here. And we did lose the Kruger. But Odie's going to go down on the next snow block ice block maybe actually he might survive with shakir no i don't think shakir is going to be able out dps it but that still gives us more uptime on the boss right here which again we have a much better score so uh shakir is kind of the key here let's just put it that way if you don't have shakir built up yet you're gonna be at a huge disadvantage against other allies and it's not even because of his damage it's because of what he does but again, you can use a lot of flexibility in this team. I'm going to try to run one more, and I want to change one last thing. Uh, so Odie is surviving right there. I want to see what happens if we put Alsa in as well and put her like maybe over here. I want to see if we can get her in front of the boss. Let's see how this actually plays out. For some reason, I feel like putting Alsa in over the Kruger is the better option just because Kruger kind of double dips on our already powerful quick blade spell but yeah also gets put in that corner every single time there is one positive and it's that's Odie continues to attack the boss during this phase the downside is also takes a ton of damage she's gonna get herself a shield every once in a while i don't know if this is gonna be better with the thorn or not That is the one huge positive of her is that ability there, but it does keep her in front of the boss and take additional damage. Man, this is so, every, all these different combinations are so close that some RNG could actually be influencing the way this is going. But if we can break the Odie out right now, that would be perfect. I don't know if we have the damage for it. Oh, we did not have the damage for it. It broke right as Odie was dying, but again, this is absolutely huge damage nonetheless and actually this is better running the alsa instead of the kruger and that was not even the best setup with our alsa okay 
One more. One more. I swear. One more. I just, there's so many different combinations. I just want to test here. Let's try running something like this. Still linking the, oh man, it almost makes me wonder if we should do something else. Like run a Crescent spell. Kind of sounds good. You know what? Let's try it. Let's try the Crescent spell. Let's do one of them now that we have two magic damage dealers. Uh, so essentially, you'll watch the charge up bar over here. Once it gets to a certain amount, it's going to launch that attack. Uh, and maybe it does a lot of damage here because it does have potential. And we don't really need that physical defense ripping anymore. We almost prefer that. And that actually helps break the snowbank too, the little snowball. And you can see how many times it's getting cast. You can see right here, the spirit bomb is like charging up so quickly. And then it gets launched, so it could equal a lot of damage. Plus, we're getting some magic penetration, I think, off of that artifact, too. Oh, the also went down again. Oh, it's so triggering that she does stand right there. Man. Can these two break OD out? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. Although, Thorn does have it. No, no, not going to be enough. Uh, but again, you can see all these are within like the 40 to 45% range. So it does give a lot of flexibility if you do have teams similar to this. So keep that in mind. Thorin keeps going. 43 to 45% does seem to be the cap here. But running also definitely seemed to help. And having the Shakir is absolutely amazing. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I need to power up my team further today and see what ranking I can get. But hopefully it helps you guys. And I'll see you guys next time.